Hello friends, ladies and gentlemen. And a lot of people think that Padre Pio is absolutely unique. But there are other saints similar to him, other saints with the stigmata and similar gifts. So let's have a look at one of these today. And our question really is, is Padre Pio and Saint Gemma Galgani, are their stigmata the same? Now, both, both saints are of fairly recent times. My parents could well have met Padre Pio and my grandparents could have walked in the city of Lucca with Saint Gemma. And both saints carried the wounds of our Lord on their bodies, the stigmata. So do stay tuned to find out more. Perhaps you're seeing our Catholic faith somewhat diminished by scandals, corruptions, sistering untreated wounds. So let us then take a journey upstream to the pure sources of the saints. And there we can rest a while and we can drink from the water that they supply us. Now to follow these short stories on, on Great Saints, you will have to be subscribed to this channel. And also to help us with this apostolate, do like the video and share it with friends and colleagues. Our story takes place on the 8th of June, 1899 the evening of the Feast of the Sacred Heart. And St. Gemma Galgani had this particular vision. Now actually, slightly before the vision, she had some sort of a premonition that something extraordinary was about to take place, an extraordinary grace. And she gives this account to her spiritual director. It was Thursday, she said, Thursday evening, and suddenly I felt this inward sorrow for my sins and she says it was so intense something i've never felt like that again since and my sorrow made me feel as if i would die right there and then it was absolutely overwhelming and she says after that i fought, felt all the powers of my soul in a state of recollection so some sort of induced state of prayer so isn't that why when we start Mass, we start with kind of a confession, asking forgiveness for our sins, because it puts us in the state of prayer. It did in this case with St. Gemma. And she continues that, my thoughts then crowded quickly, and they were alternating now between sorrow and love, hope and fear and comfort. And then in a state of rapture, I saw our Heavenly Mother, she, she, she continues, our Heavenly Mother wrapped Gemma in her mantle or her cloak. And then in her own words now, Jesus appeared then with his wounds all open, the wounds on his hands and his feet. And she says, blood was not flowing from them, but there were flames of fire. And one of which came, the one of the flames kind of detached and came and touched my hands and my feet and my heart, she says. I felt like I was dying and would, would have fallen down except my mother supported me, keeping me under her cloak. And thus I remained for several hours. So her vision lasted hours and hours and yet she was only touched by one of the flames. Can we imagine if we were embraced by the entire furnace of flames which are found in our Lord's heart. What would that be like? And she tells us, Then my mother, that is Our Lady, kissed my forehead, and the vision now disappeared. So if you ever wanted to meet a special chosen soul, is this not her? St. Gemma Golgani. Then after this, I found myself now on my knees, but still with pain in my hands and my feet and my heart. And then when I got up to go to bed, I saw there was blood coming from the places that had the pain. She hadn't even known that these were open wounds that they were bleeding until now. She was in a state of ecstasy, oblivious to the physical world. And so she says, I covered them as best as I could and was helped by my guardian angel. who he Helped her to get into bed. So St. Gemma Galgani was another soul like Padre Pio. She could see her guardian angel, speak to her guardian angel, and have a conversation with the guardian angel. And in this case, he was 
physically visible and helping her to get into bed, which was necessary because of the agonizing experience that she had been through. Now comparing this to Padre Pio when he received one of his stigmata, the chest wound. He says, an angel appeared and thrust a fiery lance into his heart, through his heart. He said it felt as if all of his internal organs had been ruptured, leaving him bleeding profusely. And after that, he crawled to his room. And he said that it felt like from then on, he had been mortally wounded. So there's a strong association here between receiving the stigmata and our Lord's crucifixion. And then life continued for Gemma. The next day, she just got up, covered her hands with gloves, and went to Mass as usual. And then later on, she met her aunt, and she showed the marks of the stigmata to her aunt, saying, Look what Jesus has done to me. So St. Gemma Golgani was quite open about all of this. Just, you know, as if it was part of the normal life, something, nothing unusual. Whereas for Padre Pio, he was very embarrassed about the wounds he received. Always tried to hide them, keep them concealed at least in his fingerless brown gloves. St. Gemma continues the story. Well, actually, before we go there, um, for Padre Pio, during Mass, the stigmata would often open and start bleeding in this very holy situation. And then it would heal afterwards. It would close afterwards, stop bleeding. For St. Gemma Galgani, it was different. Each Thursday, the wounds would open again. And the stigmata, she says, would remain like that until Friday evening or Saturday morning. So uh, Friday is associated with the death of our Lord on the cross. After that, the wounds would close, leaving just little white marks on her hands. That was all, in place of the deep gashes. Now, what were people's reactions to the stigmata? Well, later on, when her spiritual director turned to science for an explanation, what has happened here with St. Gemma Golgani, the doctor wrote this off and said it's simply an, a delusion of an overly pious soul. <laughs> and Padre Pio's answer, when they said the same thing about him, it was just mind over matter, somehow his psychology had induced the stigmata. He responded, very well, then why don't you go into the field and sit there and imagine that you're a bull? And see how long it is going to be before you grow horns on your head. And <laughs> perhaps never. Other churchmen, unfortunately, used this situation to try to have Padre Pio cancelled. It's always easy to explain these incredible things, these miracles of faith away in some way. But our Lord does ask us, for things like this, to have a childlike faith. Now, how did it all end? So what was the end game of the stigmata? In Padre Pio's case, for 50 years he carried the stigmata on his body. And then three days before his death, the stigmata simply vanished. Not even a scar or a trace remained. In St. Gemma's case, Gemma Golgani's case, it was three years before her death and her spiritual director forbade her now to accept this phenomena. So she prayed about it. And they simply disappeared permanently. The little white marks did remain on the skin. It was all that remained. So should we now say thank you to Gemma Gilgani's spiritual director for driving the stigmata away? Well, traditionally, the church has always been careful and skeptical of these spectacular phenomena. And naturally, this is important because imagine the damage that could be done if they turned out to be false phenomena. A reminder, do help us with this apostolate. Our channel depends entirely on you. So do make sure first that you have subscribed and click that reminder bell and the options on. And then also do share the video with friends, with enemies, anyone who may benefit. And it will also help if you give us the thumbs up, the like to the video. That will be helping us with our great saints apostolate. We thank you for watching and we do hope to see you next time. Sam.